ladies and gentlemen, a short statement after a series of discussions that have been held between the government and uh, the private sector, especially those who are involved in the milling industry. So, ladies and gentlemen, for the last four years, as all of you well know, our nation, our country, and indeed the entire Horn of Africa region at large has experienced unexpected uh, low rainfalls. This has resulted in drought, poor harvests, and in some parts, complete crop failure. And this situation, unfortunately, has also been compounded by other issues. We have had the desert locust invasion of 2019, the effects of COVID-19 pandemic in 2020 and 2021, and also the disruptions in the supply chain of food and farm imports and fuel following the Ukraine-Russian war. As a result of all this, a number of vulnerable households in Kenya has increasingly and tremendously been affected and the cost of basic food items has risen beyond the reach of many of our families. Faced with such a challenge, this moment requires us to act and to act in unison in order to cushion the vulnerable in our society as we continue to work out how to find sustainable means of dealing with this emerging trend. This is what we did when the COVID pandemic ravaged our country beginning March of 2020. And today, and borrowing from our experience in managing these previous challenges, we are here to squarely address the question of cost of living. And in doing so, I want to focus on the ethical behavior practiced by the three key entities that have the duty of care for the people of this republic. First, we have our corporate citizens and their social and ethical practice. Entities like the Mays Millers who are with us today are some of them and many others. The second is the political class, me being one of them, and the civic duty required of us. And the third is the government and the social responsibility that it is required to practice. I will address today the three key elements of civic responsibility as they relate in particular to the question of the price of unga in our country. And let me begin very honestly because I think we must talk openly of a pattern that some of us have observed in our country. Indeed, every election in our country has attracted an UNGA crisis. And in fact, at times it seems to be engineered 
a connection between UNGA and its high price and elections. There is an obvious trend between the manner the price of UNGA goes up and the tempo taken up during elections. <laughs> 